Welcome to Jazz Arranging Class. Today we're going to talk about the 10 mistakes that beginning arrangers often make when putting together a jazz arrangement. I have personally seen every one of these mistakes, so I thought I'd make a short video so you can avoid making these same mistakes yourself, whether you're a beginner or an experienced arranger. Avoiding these common mistakes and pitfalls will help you create engaging and fun charts that musicians will enjoy and they'll look forward to playing again and again. So let's get started. Mistake number one, no style or tempo marking on the score and parts. The first crucial mistake many beginning arrangers make is failing to include a tempo and style indication at the beginning of the score and parts. Without a style and tempo, a conductor and the musicians have no idea how the music should be played. Setting the right tempo and stylistic direction is essential for the musicians to know how to rehearse and perform the chart. Always make sure you notate the style and tempo at the top left of the score and parts. You can notate an exact tempo or a tempo range that is suitable to make the chart sound its best. Mistake number two, failure to tell a story in your arrangement. Another basic mistake beginners make is failing to tell a musical story with their arrangement. A well-written chart has good pacing and develops gradually before reaching a climactic point in the music. Your arrangement should have a well-paced climax, usually around two-thirds of the way into the music. For example, in a swing style, great arrangers will often use what is called a shout chorus, a moment in the arrangement where the band has reached full intensity. Every great arrangement leads the listener through a story, never allowing that listener to become bored or inattentive. While this skill often takes years of practice to master, it's essential to always consider the big picture and not get lost in the details that often paralyze an arranger. Mistake number three, lack of reharmonizing standard chord changes. Oftentimes, beginning arrangers will settle for stock chord changes taken directly from a fake book. Many jazz standards are decades old and jazz vocabulary has changed and become more sophisticated over time. Always spend a good amount of time on reharmonizing the tune you choose to arrange. Doing so will help promote inner voice movement, especially in ballads and slow swing tunes. On the flip side, be cautious that your reharmonizations do not destroy or subvert the melody of the tune. Sometimes less is more when it comes to reharmonization. Mistake number four, overcrowding an arrangement. Avoid overcrowding your arrangement with excessive musical material. The best arrangers use economy of means to maintain balance and unity in their charts. A few good musical ideas is all you need to write a compelling arrangement. This method works much better than attempting to incorporate every arranging technique you know into one chart. Come up with a few good ideas, then vary those ideas as the chart progresses. Strive for balance and unity within your arrangements, and the end result will be music that people enjoy listening to over and over again. Mistake number five, few or no articulations. Inconsistent notation of articulations in parts and score will make or break the performance of an arrangement. Players simply must know how each note should be articulated. The swing style contains inherent articulations such as the final eighth note in a phrase, always articulated as a short note. But quarter notes can be long, short, or fat, as in the case of the housetop articulation. Articulations in funk style and highly syncopated passages are crucial so that the musicians know exactly how each phrase should be performed. There is nothing worse than question after question from band members on how a passage should be performed. Better to have too many articulations than not enough. Mistake number six, failure to manipulate span, weight, and density. A traditional big band includes 17 instruments divided into four sections, saxes, trombones, trumpets, and rhythm section. Beginning arrangers and even experienced writers will oftentimes never venture away from arranging for sections only. Manipulation of span, weight, and density is a mindset and a process of treating all instruments as individuals, not always as part of a section. The result of being fully aware of span, weight, and density in your arrangement results in what is often referred to as cross-section voicings and lines. When fully engaged in this concept while you engage in the arranging process, you will find new possibilities you never knew existed. Keep this concept in mind when studying scores as well. Over time, you will instinctively begin to encounter fresh ideas and develop your own distinctive arranging voice. Mistake number seven, lack of courtesy accidentals. In a big band or combo chart, courtesy accidentals are often used when the same note appears in two consecutive measures, but the accidental is only applied in the first measure. The courtesy accidental in the following measure reminds the player that the note should be played as written without the previous accidental. Typically surrounded by parentheses, a courtesy accidental serves as a reminder that prevents errors, especially during fast tempos or when sight reading a chart for the first time. Checking for and applying courtesy accidentals can be time consuming and tedious, but doing so can eliminate note errors that may not have been made without them. Mistake number eight, improper use of ranges in horns. Every instrument in an ensemble has a range of notes as well as different characteristics throughout that range. 
As an arranger, it is essential to master each instrument's effective range for specific use cases. For example, let's say you score a unison line for trumpet and flute. Because the trumpet is a much stronger sounding instrument than the flute, scoring these instruments on the same notes will allow for the trumpet to bury the flute and it won't be heard. In this example, the flute should be scored an octave higher than the trumpet. Here is an example of a C9 chord voice for trombones. All of these notes are part of a C9 chord, but because the notes fall within the lower part of the trombone's register, the voicing will sound muddy and really not even reflect the tonality of a C9 chord. Here is the same chord voice for trombones in an effective register. There is no doubt that mastering the intricacies of each instrument's range will highly improve the sound of your arrangements. Mistake number nine, poor choice of key. Your choice of key for your arrangement is generally dependent on two things, the range and high point of the melody and the size of the ensemble you're arranging for. A good rule of thumb is finding the top note of the melody and using the lead trumpet range as your guide. For example, if you're writing for a small jazz combo of four horns, your choice of key signature may be up to a fourth lower than say a big band arrangement. Why? because generally the top trumpet range of a combo chart will be at the top portion of the staff or just above it, while the top note in a big band chart can be much higher, simply because a big band gives more support to the lead trumpet as it goes higher in range. A combo arrangement tends to get thin when the trumpet gets too high in four-part harmony. There are other factors, of course, but as a rule of thumb, judge your key choice by the top note of the melody in the tune. Mistake number 10, poor formatting of score and parts. You spend countless hours on creating arrangements, so you must make sure you have formatted your score and parts properly. For scores, use landscape view and reduce page to 40%. Include only eight bars per page. Always include large measure numbers at the bottom of the score for easy reading by the conductor. I personally do not use rehearsal letters in scores, but I probably should. It's certainly not a bad idea. For parts that will be printed on eight and a half by 11 paper, I reduce parts to 96% and include nine staves on the title page and 10 staves on subsequent pages. I strive to keep four bars to a stay, but it really depends on the chart. A lot of tunes are in AABA format, oftentimes 32 bars in length, so four bars to a page helps keep the start of sections and phrases at the beginning of the stave. For written solos, I reduce the notes to 75%. For parts, I used to number every measure, but I found out that it clutters the page, so now I simply start every stave with a measure number. Lastly, try to allow for page turns at the end of the second page if a part ends up being more than three pages. Having easily readable parts and scores will really help the rehearsal and performance of your arrangement. I've learned that most players, especially pros, have no patience for hard to read parts and scores. So there you have it, 10 common mistakes that beginning arrangers make. By avoiding these 10 common mistakes, you'll be well on your way to creating excellent charts that sound good and will be fun to play. Remember, great arranging is an art that requires a lot of practice and may take years before you really get the hang of it. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe and leave a comment below. See you next time.